I'm Vale Dixon with Simple Soil Solutions, and we're here in Buckingham County, Virginia, on our main horse farm. This field we call the upper field, and it's only about a three acre field. For the past two winters, it's been hit very hard. Two winters ago, it was hit with eight horses in here, and we had to leave them in here longer. We've grazed through all of our fence land, and this was our last field, and it was just snowing, and turn into bad weather and we didn't have any other options and we were figuring out what we had to do so we had to leave them in a few weeks extra. This field, especially the areas around the shed, if anyone had looked at it, would never imagine that it would recover to this state. When you looked at about a third of this field around the shed, it looked like mud. But what it really was, was we understood that the horses needed hay and we understood that they overgrazed the area near the shed because the water and the shed were in the same place. And even when we were doing our rotational grazing or high density grazing and moving the fence down, they still had to walk back and access this area. So this area could not get rest, even if the other areas were resting. And so without rest, it would have turned into a complete mud hole. And being on the hill, we would have had a lot of erosion and lost our seed bank and our fertility down into the water stream. So what we did to mitigate that was we created what's called a sacrifice area and strategy. We fed the hay systematically and we spread the hay out. Instead of putting like half a bale here, or half a bale there, trying to conserve the hay and leave as little residue as possible, which is what most people do when they feed hay, we understood that putting hay along the surface residue and getting it dispersed as evenly as possible, especially on those bare areas that were starting to happen, and getting the horses manure on those areas, we could create a cake, so to speak. Instead of just bare mud, we could create the mud with the hay and the manure and stomped all together. When we removed the horses, we could let it rest and that would create seed germination. So to do that, we fed the hay and we made sure each day we were moving down the hill so that they were walking back over the old hay residue. And we fed the hay bales down the hill and the horses would stomp that hay into the manure. All this right here was completely bare. It looked like a mud hole but from a distance, but it wasn't actually mud, which was a benefit because we didn't have the thrush problems and the things with the horses because they were walking on, a, on hay. And a lot of people would have looked, look at all that hay that she wasted. Well, all that hay and manure is now breaking down and is providing fertility and a seed germination bed for my new plants. The whole field has just come back really well but in particular where we made this cake, we had hay that definitely didn't have herbicides and it had a lot of seed head in it. Definitely there's a lot of orchard grass and mostly fescue and warm seasons and all sorts of grasses coming up in here. And there are some weeds, but where we stomped down the hay and the manure and we just made layer after layer and layer and it just got churned into the mud, the grass just came back like gangbusters. This is lamb's quarters and uh, this is this nice tall character here. It is 42% protein in its young stages, so if I had, I think the horses might eat it had I gotten in here, but my grass grew so fast I never got back around to this field. I thought I would normally would be back around here and needing more grass. The weeds germinate in a compacted area because where the compacted area is, there's a lack of oxygen because the water moves down and hits the layer of compaction and moves across. The air diffuses slower through water than it does through the soil, and it creates a lower parts per million of oxygen in that thin little slime layer. It's very similar to the slime layer you might find in your dog or cat bowl, water bowl or in your horse water trough. That little slimy layer is hundreds of cells thick of anaerobic bacteria. And the reason why you get patches of weeds in your, quote, weeds in your pastures is oftentimes the weeds that we speak of as weeds germinate in pulses of what's called nitrate. Now we talked about nitrate as a form of nitrogen that the grasses use also, but they use it in balance with another form of, of nitrogen called ammonium, and they use it in certain levels. 
But what happens is when you get the soil um, too bacterial, you don't have any residues and animals have compacted it and there's no surface residues turning brown and falling down to feed the fungi, then you're not feeding your fungi and over time that soil becomes very bacterially dominated. And the bacteria, they start to um, reproduce really rapidly at certain times of the year so they will spike in numbers and then they get to where they use up the soil oxygen and they die off. So they have these spikes and dying off, and when they die off, bacteria are almost pure protein, and there's a huge form of nitrogen in the soil released as nitrate. And these weeds um, not only have root systems that thrive in compacted soils, but they use the forms of nitrogens in the pulses and timings that a highly bacterially dominated soil provides. Is if we've destroyed the soil cover, and there's not a lot of dead vegetative plant material falling on the surface as fungal food, we need to feed our microbes all the time. And so if you just have manures from the horses and compacted soil from the animals trotting, like in a lane, you're going to be selecting for a bacterially dominated system that's way out of balance. And all levels of the food chain are not in balance. And so if all levels aren't producing in balance, you're not going to be able to grow grass. I just want to show you it's, it's nothing to hide if you have big weeds. <laughs> They're just summer annual weeds. We talked about lamb's quarters in our previous video here. Um, about two weeks ago, we filmed here when we had just put the horses in. This lamb's quarter forest was pretty much a solid forest. And I strung my line just around it. And the first night, I put the three horses um, just in a very small paddock, just with that lamb's quarter forest. And there was a significant amount of forage available. The animals, without any machines, have knocked it down quite a bit. There were several days when um, we set up a lane after that initial, you know, sacrifice little area, and we set up a lane down the, the top of the hill first, and we're gonna move that lane down the hill, and we've been moving the fence each day down the lane. There was some weeds here in the compacted areas, and we've talked about why those weeds come up in the compacted areas. These horses have taken them down, and we haven't even removed the stems. Those stems are already decomposing, and. You know, I was quite surprised, even myself. I knew they would stomp it in, but I really didn't realize how quickly the stems would disappear. We had this lamb's quarter. We were busy and we didn't get to it. And it, it basically just dominated this whole area. You couldn't even see through it. And it was all lamb's quarter. And basically the seed was totally viable by the time the horses came in. And we put down a lot of lamb's quarter seeds. And you can see that these are lamb's quarters plants coming up. But these are all kind of struggling. If you look at them, I don't know if you can get this, but it, they've got red around the edges and they're shutting down. Like they're yellow and red and spotty and we will see how this progresses. We will be grazing this more and we'll see if the horses eat the lamb's quarters. We'll see what happens with them. Do they starve? Do they, as we're changing the soil microbial environment, are they going to be taken over more by grasses? We're here at our cello farm. It's October 23rd, 2014. This is our upper field. Looks very different than two years ago. This is a huge diversity and, and density of plants. I'm just walk, you know, it's like walking on this carpet. Um, and this is an area in front of the shed that if you look back in the series and you follow it was a forest of lamb's quarters. You can see there's grass, there's not weeds. Now how do we get there? We talk about that being a secession. And we went through secession here, folks. We built soil like crazy. You know, most of the things that you can do for the basics will take care of the rest. That's why I call it simple soil solutions. The system in nature is extremely complex, but the truths that we need to manage it are very simple. It's about giving back. It's about paying attention. So if you're someone that enjoys listening to a diversity of birds, being in your fields, rather than being in a bunch of mud, you'll enjoy the system. Guys, I wish you could be out here and sense how it feels walking on this land when it's 
the earth is starting to rebound. It's not like just uh, 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 and then turn to mud, 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 and then dry, 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 hard, mud, mud, mud. It's got cushion. It's got infiltration. It's got structure. It's like the energy is starting to really cycle between the, the microbes and the plants and me and the earth and the impacts and the rest. And it's, it's really cool.